Hello and welcome to the Craft Man Show. My name is your host, the Craft Man. Still a crafter. And today, for now, look at this one. Crab man is going to try vacuum farming for the first time. What? There's the starter kit. So they send you something that you can already can use. Yeah, we may try it. Uh, let's see. Uh, there's some information. I'm going to have to look at this. Let's see. Uh, thank you. Let's see. And I like my uh, my contents to be better like that right there. Look at that. It tells you what everything is. You're going to put your uh, plastic sheets up in there. And then it's going to be heated up. We're going to let it start to sag, all right? You get your little object right down here, and you go, shoo, and it's going to form around it. That's the whole bit, all right? The, uh, click, click. So you will need a vacuum cleaner to you, the farm box. Uh, to you pretty much in a uh, you know a vacuum farming machine and so i'm just going to be using my old shop vac i tried to vacuum my shop vac for y'all but it's still dirt because this is a workshop you know what i'm saying and so i just plug in my dirty shop vac plug work right it looks like my shop bag will fit right on up into this thing. But hold up. That's probably not what you want to do. Because look at this right here. It came with this hole right here. And that's going to give you a good seed, a good connection. So that that thing can pull a good suction on it. You ain't got no air. You know, when you got ridgy plastic against ridgy plastic, you're not going to get that good pull like you would from the rubber pieces right there. So we're going to hook the shop vac right here into the little farm box adapter connector. And then that's right there. That's going to go into the farm box. And that's a good seal right there now. All right. We got some, some farm sheets right there. Uh, what is the maximum thickness that you can do on the farm box? I have read that you could do up to 1.5 millimeter, and that's pretty thick. Oh, there we go. We got some transparent stuff. And it looks like it's got a film on it. Yes, yes, because it says peel to protect the fin from the top of the sheet. You can put these into house or what exactly? All right. I like the simplicity of these instructions. This look like it's going to be pretty straightforward. All right, so do y'all know about undercuts right there? You know, typically you don't want your uh, plastic when it falls around it to go whoom like that. It's going to make your object hard to remove it. And so that's to demonstrate the way that you avoid the undercut. But there right there, that blast is going to go up and then straight on down with it. All right, so I have not turned on the heater. Have not turned on the timer. All right, notice it's got these rubber seals right there. So we're going to place the plastic sheet right there. All right, just a bit like that. So what should happen theoretically is that the heat right there, that's a thousand watt ceramic heater. All right, we're going to raise the plastic like that right there. And then once the plastic get heated up, starts to droop down, then we're going to bring it down on top of our object. All right. 
All right, now this particular plastic sheet that we using is the temperature five, heating time two minutes to two minutes, 20 seconds. So we're going to go back there right there. But craft man, what can you do with the, uh, you know, you could pour something into it. Maybe you want to do resin. Maybe you want to do concrete. Uh, maybe you would like to do chocolate. You know, just be sure that your uh, plastic is rated for food contact. All right, a little way back, I made a bootleg figure called MC Hammerhead Hunter for Bounties. Well, I always thought it would be neat to do action figures packaging, but you know, I got these bubble blister packaging things that uh, I said, look, that ain't going to work. It would be neat if they had me some uh, packaging for that man right there. And so I would like to say special shout out to my friend, Mr. Scott Milton. Look at this right here. And uh, he saw the uh, MC Hammerhead hunt for bounty. He said, crap, man, let me do you some little, uh, some little card art. So I had this printed on some heavy style uh, card stock. And I went ahead and did me a little thing on the back of it like that right there. I said, look, what do y'all think about if we did us a little uh, packaging? You know, something. And to be honest, I wanted to have me a solid color coming in there. Kind of like how they did it, you know. That's an action force example right there. And then that's a, a, a Star Wars example right there. You know, I thought that would be neat to have a solid color. I said, but you know what? I'd rather just give me more like a poster. And then that way, and then that way, you know, we could have us a bunch of them that uh i don't know what i'm going to do with you probably going to send these to some of my patreon supporters and so what we got to make is a book all right b-u-c-k and all that is just a rough shape that we can vacuum farm around it and it's going to fit this right there <laughs> can fit and I wanted to go with the angle on it to make it kind of fancy you know and so what I was thinking is y'all remember earlier when we did this the texture of the foam box the mesh on it is going to give you this texture right there and that's not a bad thing we just want the flange that goes around our actual figure to be smooth all right just like that right there so here's what I was thinking. I feel like that material right there is pretty thick. See that? And so we going to take and trace the outline. All right, does that make sense to you? Uh, otherwise, it might look like that right there. See that? But you know. And so I thought now might be the best time to finally use the right thaw. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, I need to brush up. I think that's a catalytic converter, but that does not make sense. Uh, that's a solenoid right there. Wait a second. Hold on. Crap, man. Wait. You know, a picture worth a thousand words, but, you know, knowing when to begin is half the battle. Let's see this.
I'm going to put in just a little dab of glue uh, to keep this together. And then we're going to be ready to live our dreams of making custom action figures package. All right, it's green. That means we up to temperature. So with vacuum farming, one thing that you might run into is webbing. That little fold right there, that little wrinkle out in the corner. And so there's a number of reasons why come that is. So I went through several variations and tried different little uh, things. I tried to poke me some little holes in my little car stop flange so I could get better suction right there. Through this little hole right there. other thing I did is instead of car stock I went on ahead and replaced the, the car stock with wood look at that right there craftsman why is that well I read on the internet that's going to give a multi pull down and going to reduce the chance of webbing all right the other thing to hit me to reduce that webbing is look at that right there See that curvature on the uh, action figure blister that I was showing y'all earlier in the program CD. I took my books out to the bell sander and just look, ran to them over. Look at that. Took down them sharp corners. All right, ran the smooth things out. And that really helped out, all right. One of the biggest things is I found out I was letting my up plastic heat for too long. Look at that sag. I'm telling y'all this so that you will know that you might not need to let it go that long. So I spoke with my contact about the farm back and she told me, you know what, crap, man, I got to where I don't even use the timer. I just watched that thing. And then things just kept getting better and better. Look at that right there. And then the other thing, instead of bringing that thing down like that, instead of doing that, we going to go. A little more slow with it like that. We're going to do something else with the. Oh crap, man, can't you just, instead of doing one of them, doing the other uh, individual, can't you just do them both together? And the answer is uh, possibly, but you know, when you vacuum farming, it needs to have some degrees of space up in between now for it to really pull down. Because look at the, that's one of my first attempts right there, doing both of them sad by sad, see that? If that was further apart, it would have been a nice more uniformity up in there. But you know, it is possible to do things together. It's all about that space that you have. And I took my sombrero punch and I got out to me a zapper and I said, look at this right there. And this right there, adjustable. All right. You can hang that thing up on a rack now in a tar star city. I don't know, to me that feels neat. I would like to put my little sticker, a little uh, price, you know, three ninety five, two ninety five, five, or seven to five, a price tag on it. That would be neat. Uh, by the way, uh, these sombrero, uh, oh, not always just in the center. It depends on where the weight's at in the uh, package. And that's the final result right there. I was very happy with how that turned out. And like I said, if I was designing real uh, action if I wanted to make basically a poster, uh, something that I could send out to people, and I got a bunch of these that's not going to have a sombrero punch. But one day I'm going to design them some action figures package and going to, going to make it look like packaging, you know. Going to have some little thing like that. 
very happy with them. Pros and cons. Let's start with the cons first. And I anticipate a lot of comments about the the price, the cost of it, the price. Hold up, crap man. Why can't you just build you a vacuum farmer? Well, probably honestly, I could, you know. But by the time I would get my material, get myself a plan ready, get everything laid out to build my vacuum farmer, then I got enough that I'll come and do. When I got the chance to get the farm box for free, I said, look here, I've been wanting to do me some action figures packaging. So I said, this would be a great honor to do the, uh, you can build your own vacuum farm machine. It don't even have to be a machine. You can actually do, take you a metal frame, some kind of a frame that's heat resistant, and clamp your plastic up into it and put it in an oven and let it start to sag and then come down on top of your perforated bar, whatever it is that's pulling the vacuum. And you can just do vacuum farming that way if you want to. And they always going to be somebody who can build one for thirty dollars. Going to be somebody who can build one for free. Might even be somebody who can be paid to build one. And then the other kind would be the size of it. If you're going to build you one in a way, might well go ahead and build you a big one. You know. For me personally, this is exactly what I need. I don't need nothing. I ain't making a hemis visors and things like that. So. You know, it's a good size for me. The pros is going to be that it's fast, all right? You can lift that thing up, heat it up, and then slide it down. It's one unit, one compact unit that does all of it, all right? And so that's good. It's got a really good quality ceramic heater. Very substantial made, very good quality. And unlike something that Craftman would build, this machine is pretty. It's nice, it's very sleek. You could put the uh, farm box right on your front counter. If it's something crab man built, you better hide that thing in the back somewhere. Don't let nobody see that look like a, a safety hazard, you know. Make your one now, send me the machine. They send me the farm box for free. And obviously, I want to be very uh, kind about it, to say nice things about it. But I am being honest. Uh, I wish it was a little cheaper for people. And I wish it was a little bigger, you know, for the average person. But like I said, for me, you know, for action figures, things like that, it's just right for me, though. So I just want to say thank you to Make You Enough. Specifically, thank you to Miss Jane, my contact over at Make You. This is something that I'm going to continue to use. I'm very proud of it. And so, thank you for that. Extremely grateful to have one of these right there. One day I'm going to publish a book and it's going to be called Your Credential. And so that way I can go up in my library and say, Yes, hello, I would like to check out your credentials. And they just would look at me like, What? He must be work for the government. Thinking I FBI, you know. But they don't realize that I put your credentials in quotations, Mark. I love y'all and keep on steady crafting.